The first step of making our llama looms today is taking our llama template and putting it on top of our flat slab of clay. This is going to help us get our llama loom the correct size and shape. I'm now going to take a cutting tool and I'm going to press the pointy end very carefully all the way through the clay and trace around my shape. I want to make sure that the tool is going all the way through the clay down to the mat below it. And as I start to cut away some of these extra pieces of clay, I'm just going to kind of pull them out and put them to the side because I'm actually going to need to use some of them here in just a second. And I'm trying to do the best job that I can to make sure that I'm staying right beside my paper llama. And I'm going slow, there's no rush. I want to make sure that my all my llama pieces stay together just like they are on my paper template. And then when I'm done, my clay llama should be the same size and shape as my paper llama. Now, of course, we still have a lot more left to do on our llama. The first thing is we have to prepare the body to have a loom on top of it. And to do that, I'm going to use some of my scraps and I'm going to cut some rectangles, some long skinny rectangles to put across the back and the tummy of my llama. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my tool once again. cut out a rectangle and you want to make sure that it goes all the way across your llama's back. If it is a little bit too long, you can always trim it with your tool, but I think that looks good. You want it at least as long as your finger. Now in order to attach this to the back, I have to slip and score. That means that I'm going to score the, the back piece of one piece of clay. That means kind of tear it up with your tool. And then wherever I'm going to stick it, I need to score that area as well. So I'm tearing it up really, really good with my tool. And that kind of makes some little pieces of clay that stick up. And when you press them together, they kind of grip onto each other like that. To make it just a little more sticky, I'm going to use just a few drops of water and tap those on top of my scored areas. Make sure that you don't get too much water on the rest of your clay because clay that is too wet can really, really kind of turn into mud and get mushy and sloppy. Now I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to wiggle them together like so. Just pressing sort of medium hard. Now I'm going to do the same thing and add another rectangle to the bottom. Now that I have my rectangle on the top and bottom, I'm going to use my tool to press some lines into each of these rectangles. These vertical lines are going to hold our string in place when we weave later. So instead of using the point of my tool this time, I'm going to lay it on the side so that the long end of the needle gets pressed into the clay like so. And I'm just going to press it just into the surface, not even halfway through that rectangle, and then lift it up. Now when I go to make my next one, I want to make sure that there is about the amount of space of the handle of my tool. So I don't want them really close together. I want them spaced out just a little bit, about like that. I'm going to make six lines on the top and six lines on the bottom. So there's four, five, and I actually think I'm going to do another one over here. I don't want to get it too close to the head. I want it mostly all on the llama's back. So it would probably look better if it was over here. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to try to make my lines on the bottom directly underneath the lines on the top. Just kind of using my eyeballs to get it as close as I can. Now after you have your six lines pressed into the top and the bottom, it is time to decorate our llama's face. Now to do that, we can use different wooden tools. Like for example, 
I might use the round end of my wooden stick to press in eyes for my llama. And when I make my llama's nose and mouth, I usually take one of my scraps and cut out a circle. And you can kind of smush it into the shape that you want if it didn't quite come out right. There we go, I think I like that. And then I'm going to slip and score that piece onto my llama's face. Next, I can draw on my llama's face onto that circle, his nose and his mouth, however I want that to look. And then the last step of making our llama is I think the most fun part, and that is adding his furry texture. I'm just gonna do that by using the pointy part of my tool and scratching in a lot of lines all over the surface. Now, not only can you do this all over his body, tummy, legs, and everything like that, if you want your llama to look extra hairy, then you can take your tool and sort of cut all the way through the clay on the very edge. And I'm making sure that my lines are going uh, diagonal downwards, not upwards. That will make his hair look like it's pointing up. And I want him to look more shaggy like we do in real life. So my tool is pointed downwards diagonally. And on this side, I'm gonna point it downwards diagonally this way. So if you want an extra shaggy llama, you can cut into the edge of your clay slab like I'm doing right now. Kind of makes his face look a little fluffier. Or you could just do it to the body. It's up to you. I'm going to keep on going until I'm happy with the texture of my llama. Make sure that as you're doing your texture, you don't scratch over your llama's face because that will make it hard to see. And you also don't mess up your six lines that you did on your rectangles. When you are happy with the way the front of your llama looks, very gently lift it up, flip it so that you can write your name on the back. Then we're gonna very carefully leave our llamas to dry.